Hello, welcome to the course PH6B13E Computational Physics. The contents of today's lecture is taken from Numerical Methods for Scientists and Engineers by K. Shankar Rao. We will continue to discuss topics from Module 2, Numerical Methods in Physics. In the last class, we were discussing about numerical integration. So, this is the general formula for numerical integration. And we have learned one of the methods in which you can simplify this equation that is known as a trapezoidal method. Here, you, you divide the entire interval AB into n subintervals. And for the analysis, you consider one subinterval at a time. So, n equal to 1. And what you do within that subinterval, you approximate the curve using a straight. So this is the basic idea behind trapezoidal method. And as I said, you can never approximate a curve using a straight line perfectly. So there is some error associated with trapezoidal method. And this error can be reduced using another method known as Simpson's one by third rule which we are going to discuss today. So it's an upgrade over trapezoidal method. It's a more accurate and popular method of numerical integration in comparison with trapezoidal method. Here also the interval AB is divided into a sub element. And in the case of trapezoidal method, we considered one sub interval at a time, but here you consider two sub intervals at a time. So, since we are considering two subintervals, n equal to 2 now. So the integral a to b y dx can be written as integral x0 to x2 y dx plus x2 to x4 y dx plus all the way to xn minus 2 to xn y dx. Okay. So let's consider the first two subintervals. Okay, so for the analysis, as I said, we couple these two subintervals together. So basically, we have three points x0, y0, x1, y1, x2, y2. And in trapezoidal method, we connected these points using a straight line. But here, what we are going to do is first let's look at the, the difference table. Okay. So, since we have three points, this is the difference table y0, uh, y1, y2. Sorry for the typo here. Let me correct it right away. Okay, it's corrected now. So, y0, y1, y2 are the values. Then you consider the first difference term delta y0, delta y1, and the difference between these two gives you the second order difference delta square y0. Okay. So, you have only uh, two difference terms here. So, when you construct the polynomial yn of x, uh, it has terms y0, delta y0, delta square y0. In other words, this is going to be a, a second degree polynomial. Okay. Whereas, in the case of trapezoidal method, you had terms only up to the first difference. Consequently, the polynomial was a first degree polynomial. First degree polynomial is a straight line, whereas second degree polynomial, which we have now, is a parabola. So, physically, what is happening is you consider two subintervals at a time, and within these two subintervals, you try to approximate the curve using a parabola as shown in this figure. Now, what is the advantage with parabolic approximation? As you know, parabola has an innate curvature, right? So, because of this curvature, parabola can approximate a curve much better than a straight line. So, your approximation is inherently better compared to trapezoidal method. That's why we say Simpson's 1 by 3rd rule is a more accurate mode of numerical integration compared to the trapezoidal rule. Okay. Now, since you have terms only up to delta square y0, if you look at this expression, all the terms starting from delta q y0 to onwards and all other higher order difference terms, they all vanish. So, basically you need to consider only the first three terms in this integral equation. Okay. 
So this equation is going to get simplified now n equal to 2 so first term is 2 y naught plus 2 square by 2 which is once again 2 so 2 delta y naught plus 2 into 2 cube 8 so 16 minus 3 into 4 12 so 16 minus 12 is 4 4 by 12 is uh, 1 by 3 right. so 1 by 3 delta square y naught so that's how your equation is going to get simplified so if you consider the first two sub intervals the integral is going to be integral x0 to x2 y dx equal to h into 2y0 plus 2 delta y0 plus 1 by 3 delta square y0. Let's substitute for delta y0 and delta square y0. Delta y0 is y1 minus y0. Delta square y0 is y2 minus 2y1 plus y0. To make this substitution, then you simplify the terms. Uh, basically you take the 1 by 3 factor outside and modify the terms accordingly then you get integral x0 to x2 y dx equal to h by 3 y0 plus 4 y1 plus y. Now you move to the next two sub intervals. So the integral is x2 to x4 y dx follow the same procedure the answer is going to be h by 3 y2 plus 4 y3 plus y4. So this is the general form of the equation. So you keep doing that and the last two sub intervals you get integral xn minus 2 to xn y dx equal to h by 3 yn minus 2 plus 4 yn minus 1 plus yn. Now the total integral is going to be a sum of all these terms. So i equal to integral a to b y dx equal to h by 3 y0 plus 4 y1 plus y2 plus h by 3 y2 plus 4 y3 plus y4 all the way to h by 3 yn minus 2 plus 4 yn minus 1 plus y. h by 3 is common take it outside y0 and yn they appear only once so first and last term remain the same as the trapezoidal method. Then when you look at the odd terms y1, y3, y5, etc., they all are multiplied by a factor of 4, okay. Then when you look at the even terms y2, y4, etc., so they are repeated twice, right. So here I have one y2, here I have another y2. So I have two y2 here, similar one y4 here. In the next term also I have a y4. So that is two y4. So all the even terms are multiplied by a factor of two. So your final expression becomes i equal to h by three y naught plus four y1 plus y3 plus y5 all the way to yn minus one plus two into y2 plus y4 plus y6 all the way to yn minus 2 plus yn. Two things we have to keep in mind since the terms are paired if you divide the range into even number of sub intervals only then the pairing will be proper on the other hand if you make it into odd number of sub intervals then one of the sub intervals will not be paired so that will lead to some minor error so whenever possible try to divide the range into even number of sub intervals second as we discussed in the previous class when the step size decreases the accuracy is going to increase so if you look at this figure when you decrease the step size what happens the number of intervals is going to increase right for example, take the range from 1 to 2. If the sub size is 0 0.2, then the number of sub intervals is 5. If you decrease the step size to 0 0.1, then the number of sub intervals will increase to 10. Right? So when you decrease the step size or increase the sub intervals, the accuracy of the result is going to increase. Let's do a quick problem. Take the, the function from the previous example using trapezoidal, sorry, sorry for the typo here, using Simpson's 1 by 3 rule. Okay, let me correct it. Okay, 
So using Simpson's 1 by 3 rule with a step size of 0 0.1, calculate integral 1 to 2 x cubed plus 2 x divided by x squared plus 2 x dx. So you know the drill, right? First you construct the x values, you first value equal to 1, x0 equal to 1, xn equal to 2, step size is 0.1. So the x values are 1, 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, all the way to 2. And for each of these x values, you have to calculate the corresponding y values. Okay. So when x equal to 1, substitute x equal to 1 in this expression, 1 cube plus 2 divided by 1 square plus 2, which is 1. Similarly for 1.1, 1.1 cube plus 2 into 1.1 divided by 1.1 square plus 2 into 1.1. When you make this calculation, you get the value 1.035. So this is y1. Similarly, you calculate all the way, all the values up to y n. Now let's write the, the equation for the integral i equal to h by 3 y naught plus what is y n here? y0, y1, y2, y3, y4, y5, y6, y7, y8, y9, y10. So y10 is the last element. So y0 plus y10 and all the odd terms up to n minus 1, 10 minus 1 which is 9. So all the odd terms up to y9 you have to multiply with 4. So 4 into y1 plus y3 plus y5 plus y7 plus y9. And all the even terms starting with y2 all the way to 10 minus 2 which is 8. So y2 to y8 you need to multiply with 2. So 2 into y2 plus y4 plus y6 plus y8. All the values are available here. Make the substitution. You get the answer 1.226. Now what you have to do is you have done this same uh, problem in the case of trapezoidal method. So there also you got some result with the value 0 0.1 step size. Now you can compare these two results and see which is more accurate. Let's now see how to do this uh, problem using Python programming platform. So majority of the program remains same as the trapezoidal method, only the final equation is going to be different. Okay. So let's first do the program if you are given data points as shown in this problem. Okay. So first uh, you initialize x data, y data as empty list, then take n as an input from the user. Then x and y values you input simultaneously using the split function. As and when you input, you append it to x data, y data. So basically, x and y values are created now. Step size is x data 1 minus x data 0. Then in your equation, you have to find the sum of first and last term. So let's do that right away. Thought equal to y data 0 plus y data n minus 1. Now, all the odd terms starting with 1, all starting with the second element all the way to the second last element, you have to multiply with 4. So, for this I invoke a for loop for i in range 1, n minus 1, 2. So remember, the second element has an index 1, the second last element has an index n minus 2 always keep this in mind. So when you say range 1, n minus 1, 2, it will create a sequence starting with 1 all the way to n minus 2 with a step size of 2. So you have all the odd terms available here. Next you need to add all the even terms starting with the third element all the way to the third last element multiplied with a factor of 2. So this is done using the for loop for i in range 2 n minus 1 2. So you start with the third element whose index is 2 and you go all the way to n minus 2. So you can also write n minus 2 here whether you write n minus 1 or n minus 2, you get the same result. You can cross check 
the user. Okay, so this will give you all the terms from the third term up to the third last term multiply with a factor of 2. So dot equal to dot plus 2 into y data i. So all the values are available and what you do multiply with a factor of h by 3. So integ equal to dot into h by 3 and you print the result print integral within the given limit is integral. Same program, if you are given a function, how to do it? Let's take the function from the previous example, y equal to x squared. So first you define the function, then the lower limit, upper limit, step size you take as an input from the user. You can input them simultaneously using the split function. Then a is x0 and b is xn. The corresponding y values are f of a and f of b. f of a is y0, f of b is yn. So take the sum of these two. Now you are in the first sub interval, you need to move to the second sub interval. So that is done by x equal to a plus h. Now invoke a while loop, what is the condition? x is less than the upper limit. Okay. So x less than b. Now you are in the second sub interval, the corresponding y value is y1, you need to multiply y1 with a factor of 4. So tot equal to tot plus 4 into f of x. Now you have to move to the next sub interval, so increment your x by step size of h, so x equal to x plus h. Now you need to do a conditional check, you need to check whether x is greater than or equal to the upper limit b. If yes, then you need to break, otherwise you need to continue. Okay. Now you are in the, the second sub interval where the corresponding y value is y2, you need to multiply y2 with a factor of 2, so dot equal to dot plus 2 into f of x. Once again increment x by step size, x equal to x plus h. Now this is repeated, so once again the conditional check is done, if x is less than the upper limit, you, you are basically in the third sub interval, so 4 into y3, you increment x by step size, you reach the fourth sub interval and you add 2 into y4, right? you keep doing that till you reach the upper limit b. Okay. So all the values are there, their sum is calculated. Then you need to multiply sum with a factor of h by 3, sorry this should have been h by 3. Okay, so integ equal to total into h by 3, so that gives you the value of the integral, then you simply print the result here. So these are the two methods in which you can perform numerical integration using Simpson's 1 by 3 rule. There is a homework for you. In the last class we have done this assignment. Integral 1 to 2 x squared dx we have calculated using trapezoidal method with a step size of 0 0.1. You can do the same problem using Simpson's 1 by 3 rule. Okay. So choose the step size of 0 0.1 and do this calculation. And you know what is the analytical solution for this, right? We have calculated in the previous class. That's the exact solution. Now you can compare the results obtained with the trapezoidal method and Simpson's 1 by 3 method with the exact solution. And that will give you the proof that Simpson's 1 by 3 method is a more accurate method of performing numerical integration. That's for today. Thank you.